J.T. Crowley is Talking Books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. They'll give you their take on the writing process and how to create the secret sauce of page-turning deliciousness. Let's get into that magical mixture of the art and science of creativity. Here's J.T. Crowley, author of The Smart Kids and your podcast host. Hello, everybody. I'm J.T. Crowley, and this week on my show, I'm highly honored and delighted to be talking to Shanette Maunze about her book, Slaves of the One They Chose to Obey, a book that her family were torn apart. The book is based on true and real events that over the years have torn her family apart. Rooted in Zimbabwe, from where Shanette originates from, it's a book that's heavily reflects Christian beliefs, pitted against the local beliefs dominant in her country around ancient witchcraft practices. Shanette now lives in Essex, outside London in the United Kingdom, where she lives with her husband. And she now teaches sciences to secondary school pupils. So it's a fascinating book, and this was certainly an eye-opening book for me, as I've already chatted to Shanette prior to her coming on the show. So let's invite her onto the show to talk about her book, and more importantly, why she felt compelled to write it. Shanette. Welcome to Talking Books. Thank you, John. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Believe you me, it's a great pleasure. And as I said, oh, it's been a, a real eye-opening book. And I'm, I've certainly learned a few things. And I think lots of listeners and viewers are going to be, find this fascinating and go, hmm. But, but that's what books are about, aren't they? Yes, I hope so. So, Shanette, why did you write this book? And how long did it take you to compose it? Right, John. I wrote this book. I was um, uh, uh, prompted by what was then happening in my family. Though my family had been uh, practicing this divination, witchcraft for a long time, I could not find a way to uh, to convince them. Even though I tried to talk to them using all methods, diplomatic uh, methods that I tried, um, I couldn't. But there came a point when they started killing each other. Then I thought somebody has got to stop them. And um, uh, this was prompted by uh, the fact that one of my nieces just died suddenly. And they went to a prophet who told them that to stop these killings, uh, they have to be killing my brother's children who, who was thought to be the one uh, responsible for killing his own daughter. Mm. And uh, when this happened, um, it was a really dark time for my family, for myself, even though I really didn't believe in anything that the prophet was saying. But trying to stop them, it was like talking to rocks. They wouldn't believe me. And it was only when it came to light that my niece who was said to have been killed by her own father actually died trying to get rid of a pregnancy then i found a reason to go back to them to the whole family and tell them look you've been lied to your prophet said to told you something different but this is what actually happened and i have witnesses and I felt compel, compelled to tell them because I thought so many of our family members for years have been born into this dysfunctional family, mm. this torn apart family. Some of them don't even know why 
they the family was so torn apart they just joined into the fight and uh they didn't even know how it would end so i want to I, come to that bit in a minute Jeanette, if that's okay with you yes yes um because i think the, the readers are going and the listeners are going to be very fascinated um but there's lots to this book that i want to get into oh yeah um now you're a christian Jeanette, uh, with yes. a deep faith aren't you Yes. And in your book, this comes across very strongly, especially as you uh, refer to passages, texts from the, from the Bible. Um, and these scriptural texts are dotted throughout the, the entire book. For example, in the first chapter, um, which is the death of my father, which affected you very badly, and I understand that, it's on page eight. And you make a reference to the scriptures, and it's Luke, chapter 23, 42 to 43. Yes. That passage I've looked up refers to the thief on the cross next to Jesus at the crucifixion. And what you've determined from that uh, scriptural reading is that most unlikeliest of characters can even enter the kingdom of heaven. So my question to you, Jeanette, is, are these scriptural references poignant to the messages you're trying to get across in this book? Yes. Thought so. Yeah. And uh, it's because um, we are all saved by the grace of God. If Christ the hadn't died on the cross, and we wouldn't be saved. We are saved by the unmerited favor. We don't deserve what we, or the salvation that we are getting. So uh, it doesn't matter at what point you leave the witchcraft practice, practices, God will still accept you, even on the last, uh, at, uh, on the last minute. Hmm. If you change your mind and accept God and say, I'm sorry for having believed in all these witchcraft mediums, uh, all these practices, Jesus will still accept you as if you hadn't done anything, as just what happened to the thief on the cross. That's an interesting point. Um, I want to ask you um, a little bit more and want to dig into this a little bit more here, please, Jeanette. In brief, Jeanette, can you tell the viewers, the listeners, some of the witchcraft practices you witnessed back in your native um, land of Zimbabwe? And what are diviners? What are apostolic faith prophets and witch doctors? Would you like to tell the readers, the listeners? Because yes. this is at the hub of your book. This is what's all the conflict in Jeanette's book, ladies and gentlemen. It's all around this area, isn't it? Yes. So can you tell the, you know, the listeners, what are these people and what, do they, what function do they carry out in society? Right. Which doctors, um, prophets or diviners, these are people who, um, who explain phenomena or misfortunes that happen in families. And for every misfortune, uh, families who don't believe in, in God, and even some who, who believe in God but have got a weak faith, they think their misfortunes can be explained by these diviners who could be apostolic faith, uh, prophets, mm -hmm. or witch doctors. And when they go to them, they expect to be told uh, the culprit who is responsible for the misfortune. If somebody dies in the family, there must be somebody responsible for it. If somebody is sick, there must be somebody responsible for it. And these diviners never um, fail to get somebody to blame. 
and it's normally somebody with very close within the family is the brother, is the aunt, is the sister who is responsible, and this has torn families apart. And yes. this is very prevalent in your book, isn't it? When there were all the stories, this yes. comes across very strongly, everybody. Yes, yes, and it's it has torn it it it, it torn it tore my family apart. Oh, I, so I wouldn't that. talk about other families. I know of people who have read my book and said, oh, that's what happens in my family. That's what happened. But I'm talking about my family. And yeah. that's why I'm so emotional about it. I understand that. And it comes across in your writings and the, the storylines. The emotion is there. It's very strong, everybody. Um, I, when I've looked at your book, Jeanette, the characters, Gloria, Father Albert, and uh, I hope I pronounced this one right, Mangidi. Yes. Um, now, they are fascinating characters, you know, from a, a, a book aspect. Did you feel that it was necessary to put those three characters in there, you know, especially with the goings on? Yes, I did. Hmm. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> yes. Yes, especially Gloria, who I brought up in my house and was a very strong Christian, admired by everybody. And she just elapsed back because of the love of money. And um, uh, she went straight into witchcraft, which really ended up tearing our family apart. And then Mangidi killed my father. So that's how he comes in. And um, of, of course he believe, he didn't believe in God. That's why he was easily manipulated by people who don't believe in God to kill somebody else who was like my father. Your father was um, poisoned, wasn't he, in his beer? Yes, yes. By it, it was yeah. a straight poison, yeah. Like many of the um, unexplained deaths in your book, they're poisoned, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to just temporarily here, Jeanette, put um, you know, the religious tensions aside, because this is what this book is about. Um, so putting aside the religious tensions that dominate this wonderful book of yours, there's another layer that I discovered to this book. And it's seated very discreetly, but it is very dominant. And that is, it's the plight of young, girl, young African girls and women and what they have to face up to, what they have to endure, um, what they have to, um, you know, live with, you know, um, abortions, um, you know, pregnancies. So this book also touches on issues that African women and girls have to face up to. I'm right, aren't I? Um, you are right. Unintentionally, this came through because of my niece, Scarlett, yeah. who ended up having to get rid of pregnancies because she was afraid of what the parents would say, society would say, and she could have just divorced the husband, but she was afraid because of or what is expected of young women in, in, in our society. And she ended up getting rid of so many pregnancies, one of which mm. killed her, which I think you are right. That was quite a painful uh, section in, in your book. Um, you, know, she, you know, she went very quickly, didn't she? Yes, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was all to do with a um, mishandled abortion, wasn't it? That's true. That's true. Yes. See, I have read the book, everybody. 
Some people think, you know, when we do these podcasts, when we do this, oh, we don't read the book. We just, you know, formulate a few questions. Believe you me, I read all the books. And I get the nub of all the storylines. And that's why I originate, you know, this is how I come up with the questions so that you guys can get a flavor of what these books are all about. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think, Shanette, that the the book also touches on everyday hardships that the people of Zimbabwe faced under the rule of Robert Mugabe. Uh, The poverty, you know, the lack of public facilities. Um, Do you think that if circumstances were different, you know, that the outcome of all the things that happened to your family would have been different? You know, the conflicts wouldn't have been so powerful? Was this poverty-based as well? It is, yes. Unintentionally, it just had to come through. Uh, For instance, Gloria had to lose her husband to, uh, uh, to a foreign country, and then where he got involved with another woman. If that hadn't happened, Gloria wouldn't have been wouldn't have got involved with what she got involved in. All the witchcraft, all the um, going around with anointed men of God, that wouldn't have happened. And uh, Scarlett, Mm. if things were different, she would have been able to go to a normal doctor, get get abortion if possible or even after abortion got herself uh, a proper treatment medication treatment without her just um, having to take painkillers she didn't know what was happening inside her but she mm-hmm. kept on taking painkillers she she thought the pain would go away as normal it didn't and the other thing is uh, the postmortem could have been done properly if things were different, but without a, pro- a proper health system, the postmortem wasn't done properly. So it wasn't discovered that she was actually trying to get rid of the pregnancy, um, and who had to be, who had to be involved the witch doctor, the prophet had to be involved. And the witch doctor would never know that there's anything like abortion. So he gave his own version. It's the the father who killed the daughter. How can that happen? Mm. I mean, in the book, you said, you know, uh, money was sent to them, wasn't it, for particular reasons, but they never spent that money on that. It was put to other purposes, wasn't it? Yes. That was yes. the deception. That's the deceit, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That that's hurt you, didn't it? And they wouldn't tell me because they knew that I would never support anything that involves prophets or witch doctors. So it had to be hidden from me. Um, You know, everybody, this is, as I said, a a wonderful, fascinating book, and it's a real eye-opener, I can tell you that. Um, If the, you know, if the, the conflicts, Jeanette, within the family weren't so vitriolic, maybe the book might not have seen the light of day if there weren't all these problems. I think I'm right in saying you wouldn't have written this book, would you? No, I wouldn't have. Actually, John, to to confess to you, um, I was in the process of producing a different book when I was prompted, when I was, I felt compelled to produce this one. And uh, the other one was the plight of, it was about my life, how I grew up, and the plight of girls in Zimbabwe. And um, when this happened, I felt something was compelling me. I just thought, people have got to know Hmm. what is happening. I know nobody wants to talk about these witch doctors, prophets, in case you get a curse. That's what 
people think. I said, people have got to know what is happening in families. I mean, in your book, there's a lot of mistrust. There's a lot of deceit. And the cover-ups are unsavory, aren't they? Um, especially the unexplained deaths. You know, so I cut you off quite deliberately back oh, at the beginning of the podcast because this is where I wanted to bring in the unexplained deaths and, you know, the unsavory side and the mistrust and the deceit. Would you care to tell the listeners, the viewers, Jeanette, why you talk about these sensitive emotional areas in the book, which are so sensitive to your life? Um, if I don't talk about them, nobody would ever do. Because it's something that is not talked about in our families. And it's, even if the family is Christian, the more secretive they are about these things. So I wanted to expose what is happening. And it's in my family. And uh, I wanted people to know, my family to know, where this, these divisions stemmed from. They didn't stem from um, just something that happened yesterday or last year or two years ago. They yeah. stemmed from long ago. Oh, but over nobody decades, was haven't they? Yes. Yeah, this has been happening over decades within your family. Yes. Um, when I look at the book, you know, you've got your other characters in here, Jeanette. Lizzie, Meg, uh, Charles, Juliet, Chanel, Colin. And, and these, again, everybody, are at the heart of this fascinating book. Was it difficult for you to create these, you know, write these stories about um, these family members? It wasn't because it was the truth. And um, there was um, a shroud of secrecy around the lives of these people, the deaths of these people, what was happening in their lives, and I wanted to bring it to light. I wanted everybody to know the truth. Like Colin, his sickness, and uh, that led to his death, mm. and uh, how the wife kept giving him a concussion that she, she got from the witch doctor. Um, that's something that made me sad that is still happening in in this century when will it when will it ever stop mm. somebody has got to to talk about it and say this uh culture this tradition which we call tradition it should stop it doesn't help the community, the nation, our country, it's not something that we should hold on to. There are good traditions that we should hold on to. But why should we hold on to this one? Sure. They are destroying families. Mm. And that comes across very strongly in your book. Um, just on a lighter note here, Jeanette, the beer parties. Oh, the beer parties. <laughs> Do you want to tell the viewers, the listeners, about the beer parties? Because there seems to be an awful lot of beer parties going on. <laughs> yes. Some, some of these beer parties, everybody, you wouldn't want to go to. Believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You might and not there come back from them. There are two types of beer parties. Yeah. There are beer parties where, uh, which are organised uh, in order to fundraise. Yeah, and uh, to these beer parties, th they sell all sorts of things, beers, and um, even sweets. Young people can even go there. Right, and then there are some uh, beer parties where they are organized in order to, to get help from the neighbors. 
so you can brew beer and call the neighbors from the next village, from your village. They come and help you with the harvest. And you have to provide food for them, beer for them, and they help you out. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, Shanette, you, you marginally touched on this, but um, is there another book in the pipeline? And where can people get this book? Is it Amazon? Is it uh, Waterstones? Where can they get your book? And have you got another one to write? This one can be obtained from Amazon. Mm -hmm. But the one that's coming, yes, I think that one is even more interesting. It's about Ooh. my life when I was growing up. <laughs> so you are going to do it? Oh, yes, because it's already ready. It's ready. It's just here uh, waiting, uh, publishing. And, um, oh, I want to pre-empty the contents um, it, because my father wanted to give me away for marriage when I was only 15 because um, for security reasons, because they didn't want me to end up choosing somebody who wouldn't look after me properly. So I won't preempt that one. But yes, there is one and another one. Wow. I, I take it your husband, um, Francis, is very supportive of you in your writing, isn't he? Yes, he's very supportive, very very yeah that's excellent um Jeanette, i have to say that the experience of talking to you about your book and a little bit about yourself today has been absolutely wonderful and all i can say to people is go and have a look but so this everybody this is an emotional powerful book it's beautifully and sensitively written about the conflicts that have rocked Jeanette's family stemming back to her childhood in rural Zimbabwe. It had an interesting read centered around Christianity and African traditions rooted in witchcraft, and even I say the word right in a minute, witchcraft, and how those beliefs and traditions contrast so much against what Jeanette believes in, in when she's in the Christian um, faith. And so these conflicts, everybody has destroyed Jeanette's family. And that is why the book is called, because they have chosen to go to the witchcraft. They have chosen their own route. So that is why Jeanette has titled the book, Slave of the One They Chose to Obey, and underlined with a family torn apart. Have a read. I certainly had my eyes opened. Jeanette Mayunzi. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been a wonderful pleasure to read you about your books and to learn a little bit more about you. And I can't wait to read the next book. And hopefully we can come and chat about that one on another podcast later on. But for the time being, everybody, I'm JT Crowley. That, thanks for listening, watching, wherever you are in the world. So until next time, stay safe. Bye for now.